everybody and welcome back to Circuit Media Youth Circus. We're doing a series of videos to welcome you back, to get you ready to start classes back in one of our wonderful spaces. We are starting, so I'm told, on the 19th of April. During that week, John was giving me a thumbs up, I've gotten the date correct. During that week, you will be coming back through our doors. We're going to see your lovely faces again. We're going to be able to put you up on a trapeze, up on a hoop, on the tight wire. We're going to get you guys juggling, hula hooping, on the walking globe, doing Diablo, balancing feathers, doing some acrobatics and tumbling, and all the other fun stuff that you have been missing for the last while. And push-ups. And push-ups. Very, so very push important. Lots and lots of push-ups, handstands, and lots of conditioning, which we are going to start this class with in a few minutes. Now hopefully most of you haven't forgotten who I am. I'm Alan, I'm the lead shooter here with the Youth Circus and today I'm going to be doing some conditioning with you guys. We're going to look at some juggling basics again really really quickly and we might have some time for some acro as well. I'm here today with... Rachel, I work here on the Youth Circus. Rachel is going to be doing, leading us through some handstand conditioning and a few other little bits and pieces as well. And hopefully when we're back in a few weeks, Rachel will be taking us up into the air as well. We know some of you are lucky enough to have some aerial equipment at home or have access to it. But for these videos, we're not going to be doing very much aerial up in the air. We will be looking at conditioning and shapes and things like that in future videos. So don't miss those. Okay, so. Today, we're going to start off with some ni a nice circuit for you all. Jono is over here behind the camera. He has got our list of punishments, I mean, sorry, exercises that we're going to be doing for the next few minutes. So at home, you're going to need some clear space around you. Myself and Rachel have our roll mats out here. So if you have uh, a yoga mat or even a towel as well on the floor or just a nice carpeted surface that you can work on. Um, join us in. We're going to be doing a minute of each exercise and then Jono has kindly agreed to give us like two minutes of rest in between. No. 15, 15 seconds. 15 seconds of rest in between each exercise. Um, myself and Rachel are going to do our best to keep up with you guys. So keep an eye on the screen. See how well, not well, we are doing and do join in. Of course, mum and dad, brothers and sisters are also welcome to join in. We want to see some nice, happy, fit and healthy circus families coming back to see us in a few weeks' time. Okay, Jono, what have we got up first? So your exercise, you've got mountain climbers. You've so got, we've got mountain climbers, like this. You've got high knees and burgers. <laughs> burpees, Jono, burpees. So we're going to do 10 high knees. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we're going to jump out into a plank, back, and ten more high knees. One, two, three, four. I'm not going to do very many of those because I've got a minute of those coming up. That's What's a, after that? That's a pee. Um, <laughs> toe taps. Toe taps. We're going to lie on our backs with our knees bent, and we're just going to reach forward and tap our ankles. Or if you're really bending, you can reach forward and tap your toes. Keep it engaged through your belly, shoulders off the floor, looking in between your knees. What's Double next? squats. Oh, double squats. So we're going to take a nice wide base with our feet, hands in front, and we're going to go down, a little bounce, and then up, and then down, a little bounce, and then up. Trying to keep your back straight as possible. Remember, keep your knees over your feet. Push-ups. Oh, push-ups. Okay, guys, I'm sure we all know what a push-up is. We're going to go into our plank shape. Keeping our elbows tucked into our sides, lowering down, and then pushing back up. After I've done two of those, I'm going to transition to doing them on my knees. <laughs> Maybe even one, because I've already done one full, like one full push up. <laughs> As you may have imagined, I've been keeping a tip top circus shape during our break. Okay, Jono, do you have your timer ready? I do. Do you want a 15 second rest to begin with? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fit. Look at this. All right. Look at this. Circus guard. Three, two, Mountain climbers. one, go. We have Harley here videoing us. I'm sure he's going to put some lovely circus music on behind this. <laughs> some good motivational music. That's 
30 seconds gone. Should have thought about this a bit more, shouldn't you? I blame Brenner. <laughs> Ten seconds left. And rest. Oh, oh shit, that was nice. What was the next one? The high knees and burpees? High knees and burgers. High knees and burgers. Oh, burpees. This is how we get circusy, everybody. And go. <laughs> Ten seconds left. And rest. I believe in you guys. <laughs> I don't believe in myself though. What was the signal to give you extra rest time that time? <laughs> was it this? That was something like that. What are we? Toe taps? Toe taps in three, two, one, go. I'm getting a nice glow, John. Well, thank you for thank you for your concern. Though. Thirty seconds gone. Ooh. Really think about belly button to spine. I find that helpful. Yeah. Keep your lower back pushed into the floor. Try not to hunch your shoulders up around your ears as well. Five, four, three, two. One, rest. Oh. Stop making it sound so hard. <laughs> <laughs> no. Ups. Uh, no. Double squats. Double squats. squats. Yes. But enjoy your rest. You've got another three seconds. <laughs> A whole three seconds. And go. This, boys and girls, is where you get to test the integrity of your trousers. <laughs> Make sure there's no loose stitches. Fifteen seconds. And rest. Okay. Oh, last one you go. They say the last one's the easiest. Oh yeah. Always. Down. <laughs> you had a countdown, as the other four exercises beforehand. <laughs> so remember for your push ups, guys, keep your back as flat as possible. Try and keep a nice, consistent line from your shoulders 
all the way down to your heels. Which hopefully you can see I'm doing from the video. 30 seconds. See, now you've got 15 seconds left, so you've got to stay in that you can't, you can't go to your knees now. Three, two, one, and rest. Oh, that was nice. Hope you had as much fun doing that as we did. Just going to go and get a quick drink of water now, and we'll be right back for a stretch. We're going to stretch them out, so if we come into our circus seal position on our tummies, and we're going to place our hands uh, next to our shoulders, and just to where it's comfortable, we're going to try and straighten our arms and really think about stretching those abs out. So once you've done that for a few seconds, let's come back to standing and start with the neck and work our way down. So we're going to take our head to one shoulder, we're going to stretch out the opposite hand and just place the weight of our opposite hand on our head. Don't pull the head down, you want to be very gentle with your neck. Let's do that on the other side. Push the arm away. Let's bring one arm across the body, keep the shoulder down and squeeze that arm into you. And then the other side. Let's take our first arm up above our head, reach down our back, gonna give that a gentle push down and don't let the ribs flare out, keep them sucked in. Now let's take our arms out really wide, take them across the body, out again, and alternate which arm you have on top. Arms out to the side. We're going to get a spinal twist, we're going to swing around, keep your gaze to the hand that's going towards the back and take it slightly up. So swinging around, taking the arm slightly up. Hands on the hips. We're going to do some really big hip circles. Standing on one leg, we're going to swing the free one backwards and forwards quite loosely just to get it moving in the hip joint. Make sure you don't have any little brothers or sisters standing <laughs> behind you for this one. We're going to take the same knee in a figure of eight, so it goes in towards the body and then out, like that. See if you can stay balanced on that one leg the whole time. Same on the other leg, swing it backwards and forwards, quite loosely. <laughs> and then take the knee in and out in a figure of eight. Then we're going to roll down the spine, starting with the head, going through each vertebrae at the time, really trying to round the back, keeping the knees loose, going down towards the floor, and then we're going to roll up.
and then roll down one more time. And when you get to the floor, straighten your legs and hold on to your elbows and we're going to circle our feet. Place your hands on the floor and either walk your hands or your feet up into a plank position and then we're going to do some push-ups. <laughs> then we're going to push our hips into the air and really think about sucking in your ribs and pushing your arm, armpits towards the floor. Getting a nice stretch along there. If you have to, you can uh, pad your feet up and down. Then we're going to bring one foot through to the middle of our hands. Keeping the back leg really straight and engaged. We're going to bring our torso up and you can either rest your hands on your knee or for an extra challenge, bring them up and get a little back bend in there. Bring it down. We're going to place that foot back and bring the other one through and exactly the same on the other leg. Placing the hand down. We're going to place that leg back and then we're going to place our knees on the floor and we're going to arch our back towards the ceiling and think about your nose coming through your arms. Then we're going to do the opposite and we're bring our tummy towards the floor and bring nice arch in our back. And then arching our back up towards the ceiling, towards the floor. And to get the spine really warm, we can take our back into really big back circles. Once you've done one direction, do the other. I'm now going to slide my legs out back. So I'm lying on my front and I'm going to bring one foot up. I'm going to squeeze it in towards my bum. I'm also pushing my hips into the floor. So where should I feel this stretch? Where should I feel? <laughs> this muscle here. In your... In my quad. In my quad. Where do you feel the stretch? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> through my belly and my hip. Ooh. <laughs> Just a little bit tight. And then we're going to do it on the other side. really pushing the hips into the floor. So I can feel it on my quad on this side. Oh, I think the other side is just tighter. Yeah. Tight the hip. Moving back up onto our knees. We are going to have our arms out in front of us. We're going to make a really tight fist and open it up again. We're doing that as fast as we possibly can. And do that up above the head. Up to the side, back in front, and then we're going to shake it out, and then gently we're going to pad our wrists out, so just going through them very gently like that, not too hard, and we're going to go in all directions. So I'm really working through my fingers and my hands, turning them towards me and out. And very gently, I can go on top of my hands as well. Make sure you're doing this on a soft surface. A couple of last things to stretch out. Let's do our hamstrings. So we're going to sit in a pike position, pointing our toes. And I'm just going to take my hands and I'm going to brush the floor past my feet and sit up again. I'm going to do that a few times. Just really pushing away and sitting up. And then I'm going to flex my feet. I'm going to reach forward and then sit up. And with pointed toes again, 
I'm just going to lean over, really thinking about straightening my back, not just uh, leaning over like that. Because it's really easy to get your head down low when you round your back. So keep it really straight. I'm then going to open my legs slightly into half a straddle. And I'm going to lean forwards here. If you're super bendy, you can do this and put blocks underneath your feet. Yeah. Yes, get these blocks. <laughs> and then I'm going to sit up and push um, my legs out a bit wider into a full straddle. I'm going to take my arm up and over one, one side. And I'm really thinking about, about turning that shoulder and my armpit up towards the ceiling. same side I'm going to turn and face my knee remember boys and girls it's really important to keep your knees pointed up to the ceiling while you're doing these stretches try not to let your legs roll in like this point of toes knees up and then we're going to go up and over the other side Turn to face me. And then stretch down the middle as far as you can go. stretch out the glutes, so bringing the legs in to a seated position, I'm going to place one foot on top of the other, on top of my other knee, and then with a really straight back, I'm just going to lean forwards, and you should feel the stretch up your glute. I feel this one in my knee, so I'm going to skip out on this stretch. Which is also an option. Yes. <laughs> And then do it on the other side. And then give everything a good shake out. Okay guys, if you go and get another quick drink of water and clear some space, because when we come back, we're going to start looking at our handstands. We're going to do our handstand conditioning and Rachel is going to give me some tips on my handstand shape. See you again in a sec. going to be the handstander and Rachel is going to be my spotter uh, to keep me in shape and give me some tips when I'm upside down and focusing on not face planting into the floor. For you guys, obviously, if you've got a mum or dad that you trust, they can look after you or even a, a big brother or sister to look after you either. Okay, so I'm going to hand over to Rachel. I'm going to prepare myself for my handstands. Okay, so for the handstands, if you're new here, um, we're going to be having our hands on the floor, um, having our index fingers parallel to each other and shoulder width apart. We don't want them out here or in here. And it's going to take a big lunge and kick up into a handstand. How long are we going to hold this first so handstand? So for the first handstand, we're going to hold it for 45 seconds, and then we're going to do another one for 30 seconds and another one for 15 seconds. If you have a spotter here, it's really good to spot them from the hips. I'm going to catch Alan's uh, legs when they come up and then spot them from the hips. If you're the handstander, remember, keep your legs straight. Don't flail and accidentally kick your spotter in the face. They really, really don't like that. You okay. can also do this up against a wall. It's just you'll be a little way uh, from the wall. So you, you kick up into your handstand and you can walk your hands closer in or you can alternatively have the wall behind you, place your hands on the floor, put your leg up, and walk your legs up and your hands in. If you want to see those demonstrated, have a look at our Youth Circus Home Edition video, Handstand Basics. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is the timer ready? Sure. Excellent. Do you, ready, want, to right? a, do you want to give us a countdown? Three, two, 
One, up. Six. So, just to give some little tweaks, um, I'm going to get Alan to really suck in his ribs, that's it, and push his hips forward. So make sure that his arms are really straight and pushing up, that's it. So as a spotter, it's really good to look out for things like, are they squeezing their legs together? Really make sure that they're keeping everything engaged and tell them to point their toes, that helps. Oh, and uh, looking forwards. Three, two, one, and down. And down. Lovely. That okay. was very good, Adam. You've been practicing over the break. <laughs> All right, thank you. In between the handstands, just flick your wrists out like that, give them a little bit of a break. Um, if your spotter wants to have a go, you can always swap over. For this video, though, just to keep things tight, I'm going to do each of the sets so that Rachel can chat to you guys. Okay? Okay. Three, so two, one, 30 seconds. I think I'd like a gong for the next video. <laughs> Dong. So to help the handstand and progress, if they're feeling solid in the handstand, you can try and make your spotting quite light, sort of like taking the hands away a little bit, or you can even come in from the side and just do little corrections like this, and that really helps with progressing in a handstand. Down. Down. So that was 35 seconds, but I didn't want to interrupt Rachel's well. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, John, I was getting a bit of a glow on my forehead for that one. If any mums and dads are watching, you know, John's timekeeping is, oh, you might be waiting a little bit for emails. <laughs> <laughs> 15 seconds. Three, two, one. Okay guys, so Rachel is now going to demonstrate some other ways into our handstands. If you've been to our classes before, you'll remember these. We're going to do three different entries. We're going to do each one five times. We're going to do our tucks, our straddles, and our pikes. Okay, so have a look at Rachel. I'm going to be the spotter this time. Uh, so if you're spotting any of these moves, just keep an eye on what I do, and I'll give you some tips at the end. Okay. Before I do that, I'm going to take off my lovely Circa Media hoodie, which you can purchase from Circa Media. <laughs> I'm going to get my spotter to stand directly uh, behind me, or in front of me, which will be behind me. Um, I'm going to stand, I'll start a little way um, back from them. For my uh, tuck, I'm going to start with my hands on the floor, uh, in a tuck position, and make sure everything is really straight. I'm going to push off my legs like that and when I do that I'm thinking about pushing my hips up towards the ceiling and if I go too far over Alan will catch me. Once I've done that I'm going to bring my legs into my chest like this and then I'm going to try and straighten them up towards the ceiling. Back down the same way that I went up and I'm going to do that five times. Good spotting. How many was that? That was six, I think. Six, oh, oh wow. Really. Okay. Rachel's very eager. So as the spotter, I took a nice strong position, one foot in front of the other, just in case Rachel Lee came in, come over. Because if I'm standing with my feet side by side like this, I can get pushed backwards very easily. So a nice strong base. And for somebody who's as good as Rachel, they're just watching their hips and catching them as they come up. For somebody who maybe is just learning how to do these, you might actually reach all the way over and help guide their hips into the correct position. And those points stand, stand for the next two positions as well. So I'll pass back to Rachel. So the next position is the uh, straddle up. So we worked our straddle in the stretch. 
And for this, I'm going to start with my hands on the ground again. And when I uh, push off my legs, I'm going to think about taking my feet to the side and up. I really want to try and squish my body in half as much as possible, otherwise my legs end up going out in that direction. So I think about folding in half and bringing my legs up. Like so. And then back down the way we went up. So again, we're going to do five of these. And if I do one where I might need a bit more help up so you can see what that looks like. There we go. So yeah, it's just supporting the hips and pulling them up. Find those, find those hip bones and they're a good place to just, just have your fingers there and that gives you a lot of control of the squatter. Okay, last but not least. The, uh, the pie cup. <laughs> so for this one it is quite challenging. Um, you're going to try and keep your legs straight. So start in the crouch position. I'm going to kick off my legs and I'm going to try and keep them squished into me and straight and open up into a handstand. Um, to achieve this, I really want to think about pushing my hips over my shoulders, otherwise I can't get my legs up. So when I demonstrate it, that might make a bit more sense. And the same way back down. It really helps if I try and suck in my ribs, and I also want to really resist with my shoulders. So when I jump up, my shoulders want to go in that direction, and I'm pushing them back. <laughs> so guys, one way to learn this, because pike ups are really, really difficult, is to learn the negative, and that is the same as well with your straddles. So for the negative, Rachel would kick up her favorite way into a handstand, and as a spotter, I would take her hips and then she would try and pike down. So let's have a little quick go at that. So Rachel comes into her nice handstand shape. I'll have her hips, and then she's going up ever so slowly, with her legs nice and straight, toes pointed. Come down like that. So if you're really struggling with your pike ups, as far as I know, that's a really good way to learn them, and the same with her straddles. Okay, so we'll get another quick drink, and then we'll be back with our next section. Okay guys, so it is time to do a little bit of juggling this week and then we'll finish up with some acrobatics. So I know not everybody has some nice juggling balls at home, but hopefully you might have some oranges or apples, some tennis balls. Maybe you even watched one of our earlier Youth Circus Home Edition videos where the lovely Alice taught you how to make your very own juggling balls. Now we're going to look at some basics today. I'm going to quickly whiz through with some extra things here, and then we'll get into our prop manipulation. So, as I said, if you don't have any juggling balls, like little easy peel oranges like this from your local Aldi, Lidl, Sainsbury's, Tesco, Asda, wherever it is you go, can be used. Um, you can even, if you only have two oranges, you can use two oranges and an apple. Obviously, that's a little bit trickier. If you've only got one apple and one orange, you can take off one of your socks roll it up into a nice, not smelly at all ball, and do some juggling with that. This is actually really good training for learning to juggle, because all the objects have a slightly different weight and a slightly different throw, which is really good for building up those reflexes in your arms. If you really wanted to push yourself, you could take a shoe and two different objects. So, see if we can do this live and on camera. Yeah! <laughs> Not panicked in my face at all, looking really relaxed and it, oh, there we go. Can I have my shoe back now? <laughs> <laughs> of course, thank you for loaning Jono's shoe, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay guys, so hopefully you have three objects that are of a similar size. I'm gonna start using these juggling balls now, just because it's a little simpler for me to talk and explain things while I'm juggling those. Rachel is going to take up some juggling clubs, because I know some of you at home will have some juggling clubs. Everything I say for the juggling balls as regards pattern is the same, but as you know, if you've been trying to juggle clubs, 
you have to add that tricky little spin in as you let go. So once we've finished with zipping through the basics, Rachel might have a few words for you on just what little tricks you can use to make club juggling a little bit easier. So, I'm going to start off with one object, as we always do. So, hands out like this in front of us, elbows into the side. For Rachel, she's going to be pointing her hands slightly downwards uh, with the clubs, but I'm going to keep my forearms level. And then it's a very similar between the two objects. We do a little scoop in, we release our object, and we catch it in the other hand. And that is all juggling is. So then we go back again in that little scooping action. Now, Rachel's obviously got a little bit trickier. She's got to do that spin. For me, I want to keep my juggling ball at a nice sort of forehead level height. Nice professional job there from Rachel. Um, we don't want to go too small because that's really, really tricky. It's even harder if you try and do a tiny fast spin with a claw to catch. Yeah, as you can see from Rachel's face. And we also don't want to do big throws with balls or with clubs. It's those really big floaty throws are a lot trickier to catch. And remember the throws are what's important in juggling. We want a nice consistent throw from one hand to the other. So that catching just happens automatically. The object just falls into our waiting hand. We're not reaching out in some weird direction to try and do the catch. Right, two objects, one in each hand. Again, we're gonna be working on the exact same pattern, the cascade juggling pattern, which means our objects make this little X shape in front of our face. One goes under the other. So you throw your first object in the air, and the second object goes underneath it. Okay, it doesn't matter if you start with your left hand or with your right hand, don't rely on that. Now I know a lot of you already have this basic, so we're gonna sip straight on to three objects. So, three objects, two hands. We're gonna hold two objects in one of our hands. I usually start with two objects in my right hand because I'm right-handed, so my right hand is my dominant or stronger hand. This is my other hand, it's not my bad hand, okay? It's just another hand that I have. It can be trained up to be just as good as my dominant hand. So, one object held at the back, one object held on my fingers, one object by itself. Rachel has a slightly different hold. She holds in this kind of scissors hold. An exposition, yeah. sort of. Like that. And one of the tricky things with starting with three clubs is getting used to releasing one club without it clanging into the other club. It's a little bit trickier than with balls but it is worth persevering with, okay? So, one in each hand, and then I'm not gonna do any catches, because with balls it doesn't matter, but I think Rachel's is gonna try and catch her clubs. I will try. Because <laughs> it's a little bit noisy, but that doesn't happen. So we just do one, two, three. Okay. And then we pick up again, and we try and do our catches. So we're going one, two, three, and maybe a stop, and then a one, two, three, back. Obviously this is all a lot easier with balls than it is with clubs but it's worth persevering, trying to get this pattern, because once you do, and put in that time, all of a sudden, you're juggling. Okay guys, so that is our really quick going over juggling. All these um, are explained in a lot more detail in our Circa Media Youth Circus Home Edition video, so if you go through the YouTube channel, you'll find those there, and hopefully, you'll be back with us in a few weeks. Now, we're gonna finish up with some acro. We're just gonna put our props to the side, get a quick drink, and we'll be back. Okay guys, so we've got our masks. Um, obviously, if you're doing this with somebody in your bubble, your mum or dad, brother and sister, you don't have to worry about that. Um, we're gonna do two moves. We're gonna do our candlestick, and then we're gonna finish up with just a little front stall or standing on thighs, you might know it as. I'm gonna lie down on my back and get ready to do some basing, and then Rachel is gonna talk you through the candlestick. Once my uh, face is in the position with his legs bent, shoulders firmly on the floor, um, he's going to bring his uh, arms up. I'm going to stand over him. I'm going to lower my shoulders down until Alan uh, can put onto my shoulders firmly, except his thumb is the same side as his fingers, because if he had his thumb around the other side, it's very uncomfortable. I'm going to reach through my legs and grab onto Alan's knees. Now I can either just bend my legs and jump up into the candlestick position, or to make it easier, I can put one foot and then the other foot onto Alan's knees. 
and then I'm going to straighten my legs until we're in this position where my shoulders are over his shoulders. From there, I'm going to take my legs up to the side in a straddle position and then if I feel comfortable, I can bring them up and together. Then I'm going to come down the same way. I'm going to take my legs down into a straddle and then all the way down to the floor. I'm just going to step away and help my base up. Okay guys, so as the base, after I reached up to help take Rachel's shoulders so she doesn't have to bend down quite as far, um, I let my shoulders relax back down onto the mat again. When Rachel starts to push her weight into my hands through her shoulders, I'm really pushing my arms back towards my kneecaps. If I let my hands come up over my head like this, Rachel is going to end up grabbing my trousers and pulling this way, or maybe even just slipping off completely and having to do a forward roll into the couch or television or bed, whatever is behind you when you're doing this at home. So be really conscious to keep pushing them back towards your knees. And remember, try and keep your arms straight and the flyer as well, keep your arms straight. Rachel, do you want to show us quickly the jump into yes, the canvas? Yes, yeah, let's do the jump. And then we'll finish up with our last move. So this is slightly trickier. So everything is the same. And now I'm going to do a nice big jump into a straddle position. And then legs come down the same way they went up. So that's a really good conditioning exercise as well. Your flyer can lift their legs up to straight and then straddle them down and lift them up to straight again. It's a really good core exercise and it does help with some of the more complicated acrobatic moves that we'll be doing when you're back in the space with us and we've got roll mats and crash mats all around. So let's do our last move. It's a nice simple one. It's a front stall and then we'll say goodbye. So for this move, I'm going to start out with my feet in parallel, but hip width apart. I'm going to do a little bit of a sit down here. So I'm going to send my hips back, my knees forward over my toes. I'm not going to let my knees come together or wave out the way as well. That can damage your knees. I'm going to keep my back straight so I'm not leaning forward like this. I'm going to sit back as best I can. Put my hands out with my palms up to the ceiling. I'm going to place my arms on top so that gives me a good place where I can push down on. Uh, when I step off onto Alan, I'm going to have my feet in a slight turn up. And I also don't want to start with my hips all the way back here. When I'm ready, or when we're both ready, I'm just going to go up. Well, he's going to give me a little squeeze, and we're going to go up together. And you can see how Rachel's in nice and close to me before we lean out. Yeah, so when we're ready, he gives me a squeeze, and we lean out at the same time. Our hands are around each other's uh, forearms, and we're in a nice strong grip. And then if we're feeling like it, we can let go of one hand. And wave goodbye to everybody. Bye. <laughs> See you soon. See you soon, guys. We'll be back again with more videos in the near future. For now, goodbye. See you next week. Bye.